Hey folks, I am here with Cassidy, the plant maven behind Succulents and Sunshine. If I'm correct, before you were into succulents, you were a professional photographer. Correct. And yeah. that's how you got into succulents too? Yeah, so I actually went to school for photography oh. and I loved photographing food because it stays in one place and you can move it. But that translated really well to photographing succulents. And I just thought they were cool. They're very photogenic. I really liked learning about and teaching about succulents and they were great to photograph. So that's where I kind of made that transition into succulents and now succulents and sunshine. Oh, cool. And you're excellent at both in both fields. I'm a complete novice in photography. I really, I, I don't know anything. So if it's all right with you, I have a bunch of questions I would love to throw your way. Um, they may be very basic, I'm not really sure, but awesome. yeah, I would love any help you're willing to give. Yeah, that'd be great. Great. Okay, so like a lot of people, I, I just work from my cell phone. Is that kind of okay, point and shoot, or like is there special equipment that really makes a difference for a novice? Yeah, I definitely think you can shoot with just your phone. I mean, phone cameras have come a long way in terms of what they're capable of. Yeah. You do still have some limitations with the phone, but for most of what you're probably doing, you can definitely use your phone and get some good results from it, which is knowing a few little things here and there. Okay, if I was gonna go one step beyond, what would come after cell phone photography if I was gonna like move into other realms? <laughs> yeah, so thankfully like um, an SLR or, you know, if you see someone walking around with a big camera and has a big lens the on big it. big ones, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so generally an SLR and they have come down in price dramatically. Okay. So I would say if you like really wanna get into photography, start with like an intro level SLR camera and I think you'll find it gives you a lot of control, but mm -hmm. they have also made a lot of automatic settings that make it easier. And the biggest thing that you're gonna get out of a camera like an SLR or even, you know, maybe a more comprehensive point and shoot is you're gonna get more focal length options. So your camera on your phone is shooting really wide angle. And technically some cameras now have, or phones have zoom on them. I recommend staying away from that. Okay. It's not, it's not worth it. You can crop in and post later. But um, that's the biggest thing that you're gonna get, initially at least, out of a you know big camera versus just your phone is the ability to zoom in, take pictures of things further away, and just changing that focal length instead of being completely wide angle the whole time. Okay. But like you said, I think the subject I'm working with is not running away from me, it's not far away, you can't control it, so yeah. cell phones are a great option then. Yeah, and the great thing is like, for the most part, succulents are close up, right? So you don't necessarily need to be zooming or seeing things far away. They tend to photograph well under a wide angle. So obviously there's other things you can do with a bigger camera, you have a lot more control, but there's a lot you can do with your phone too. Cool. All right, um, my understanding is lighting is very important. So how do you get good lighting? What are you looking for? Yeah, so a lot of it depends on what look you want, what you're photographing. I personally love to have succulents kind of backlit or side lit. And the reason for that is it gives a lot of texture and it highlights all of those, you know, the petals in there and the fuzzy ones. It helps all that fuzz show yeah. up and makes it look interesting. Um, generally people, when they're photographing, they tend to photograph like with the light straight in front of them. And so everything's really flat and really boring. Okay. Granted, you can probably find a way to make that interesting too, <laughs> but I would say for succulents, especially looking for light that has um, that side light or backlight, it can be tricky outside because you're getting the sunlight that's overhead. Yeah. And so you can get a lot of flatness that way. But for me, I'm usually just kind of moving around and looking for the shadows and then kind of positioning myself so that the shadows are where I want them to be. So you can kind of do like a full 360 around a particular succulent and see what light you look you like the best. Uh -huh. I mean, you could literally take a picture at you know various angles too and just kind of explore and see what you like the look of. I would love to see, you know, a mashup of like, what, six different photos from all different angles just to see how it changes with the lighting. Yeah, it's super cool. And you can even start to like look at other people's photos. So this is something I did a lot in school is I would just analyze photos and again, you're looking for those shadows and where are the shadows coming from? Are they hard? Are they soft? Okay. And it's amazing how even just barely looking at them, you can start to recognize those patterns. 
and then try and mimic that with your own photos. And you mentioned shooting outside in sunlight. How do you manage that? Are there like times of day or weather that affect it? Yeah, so one of the things that people think of is like there's a ton of light around midday. Uh -huh. That's also where you're gonna get more flat lighting because the sun is high up and so it's you know, shining straight down on everything. Okay. And so it's a little bit more like a front facing light, although technically it's just directly overhead. You can still get interesting pictures that way, but one of the benefits of photographing in the morning or the evening is you're getting more of a natural side lighting because okay. the sun's lower and so it has more of an angle. Yeah. But that said, some of it is just personal preference. Um, it's definitely an older style to photograph at like midday when everything's bright and you get really harsh shadows. You get a little bit softer light in the mornings and evenings and that's when ten people tend to photograph most. Uh -huh. And then the other thing with that is with, like you said, the weather. So there is also kind of this inclination like, oh, on like a cloudy or overcast day, I'm gonna get really soft light and really great pictures and that is kind of a two-edged sword. Oh, really? Yeah, so you do get the diffusion because uh -huh. the clouds really soften up the light. But the problem with that is you also get really deep, dark shadows. Huh. So for people especially, you really want to avoid photographing them on a cloudy day because you get like pits under your eyes. Okay. And it looks like you haven't slept for a while. Huh. Succulents, <sighs> it can kind of go either way. Sometimes if you have like a really moody succulent, it's cool to see those like deep shadows in between the leaves and it'll look better on some than others. Yeah. So again, it is kind of like an experiment, but if you're aware of those things, you can then use them to your advantage as opposed to just not knowing why this picture doesn't look good. Yeah. So you said you started with a lot of um, food photography and then now you're looking at subject um, succulents. What are you looking for in a good subject? Like what tends to catch your eye? Or is it just like you can find something interesting in anything, any plant has something to offer? Yeah, I think it kind of depends again, like what look you're going for. Obviously when I'm shopping for succulents, I'm looking for a specimen that's nearly perfect or if it's not perfect, something that seems like intentionally weird about it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, trying to like clean them off, just make them look obviously their best. Yeah. But I personally love photographing stuff that has like a different color around the edge. So mm -hmm. Semper Vivums, especially yeah. the Hufelii are great for that. Okay. When they're backlit, that edge just glows and you can really see the little, um, they're not spines, but like the little hooks on the edge. Yeah. That, it's not apparent unless you're looking up close, but the backlighting really highlights that. Oh, cool. And then the fuzziness is just fun too. The other thing you kind of want to look for is you don't want it to be like super distracting. So one thing that I love to grow is all of the little fuzzy, um, all the cobweb Semper Vivums. Yeah. And when they're small and you have all these like white circles together, there's no real focal point. Oh. So it's kind of this cool just like, full image of all these little white succulents, but it's also kind of distracting because you just, you can't find a place for your eye to rest. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have a clear focal point and then ideally not a lot of distracting things around it. So a great way to start practicing that is to have like one potted succulent, photograph it with nothing else around it, yeah. you know, have it totally by itself. And then gradually you'll find you can add things in the background that enhance the image but don't distract from it. Okay. And uh, like I said, I'm a novice. I've heard of the rule of thirds. Is that like an outdated thing? Or are we going to try to put that focal point on some of those intersections of the lines that kind of break it up into thirds? Yeah, it's, I think it's one of those things that's good to be aware of okay. it. Um, one of the things that I like to focus on more and, and the rule of thirds does kind of help you with this is what I call edge tension. Oh. So you don't want your image or your subject to be super close to the edge of your image because okay. it's like it's almost cut off, but it's not cut off. Or same thing if you're actually cutting something off, like make sure it's not just like a tiny little bit. It's very intentionally moved out of frame. All right. And so the rule of thirds can help you with that because those points right on the lines are inside the image, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can, um, yeah, so you can make sure you don't have as much of that edge tension. 
um, it is something that's generally pleasing to the eye to have your focal point a little bit off center, but it does tend to be kind of a personal preference thing too. And you might find like, um, I photographed a spiral aloe. Mm -hmm. And so to really get the full effect of the spiral, it made the most sense just to have it right in the center and taking up the full image right. and having the center right in the middle. And that kind of highlights the radial symmetry probably of like, it's so perfect yeah. in the center. Okay. Definitely. But you know, if you have a few succulents that are all grouped together, maybe you put the biggest one on one of those thirds and then the smaller ones off to the side. Okay. So that's kind of placement, which leads me into wondering about um, the angle from which you shoot. Like, are there certain angles that work better? Does it depend on the subject? Or like you were saying with lighting, should you just try a lot and see what you like? Yeah, a little bit of both. So one of the biggest things with photographing with a phone is I mentioned earlier, it has that wide angle. The closer you get to your subject, the more distorted it's going to look. So oh, the okay. edge will kind of warp. Like you've probably seen fisheye lens photos right. and it's like really warped. Uh -huh. That happens with your phone camera, just not quite as obvious. But you might even have taken like some selfies and the person on the end looks like their forehead is huge, oh, things like that. Okay. So huh. you get distortion there as you're close to the subject, things around the edge are gonna look really funky. Huh. So I recommend, it's not quite an angle thing, but I recommend not being super close to your subject, just enough where it looks like it's normal shape. Okay. And then I think you can just play around with some of the angles too. Like, um, a lot of Semper Vivums, you know, you're looking overhead and Echeveria's looking overhead makes the most sense. Uh -huh. Whereas maybe with like a tall columnar cactus, it might look cool to photograph from above. <laughs> might be tricky depending on how tall it is, Yeah. but you want to accentuate that height. So you'll probably have like a vertical image mm. and then you'll, I like the look at least of it being like straight on from the side so you can see those nice straight lines again without them getting distorted at the ends. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. One thing I will say with angles though, Yeah. this was kind of a weird trend a while ago, but I've seen it popping up occasionally. Sometimes people will like tip their camera to do like a cool angle. Oh yeah. And maybe I'm just a little traditional, but usually it just ends up looking really bad. Okay. But you can kind of try tipping your camera or phone one way or the other to see if it can accentuate some lines or maybe it highlights a certain aspect of your succulent. So I would say whatever angle you pick, just be intentional with it. Like having like this beautiful horizon, but you photographed it sideways just cause sideways is cool. It might not actually look that good. It just looks like you took it sideways. So yeah, being intentional about when you're turning your camera or phone or, you know, or if you're below or above just to kind of see what looks best and highlights your subject the best. Yeah. Yeah, I associate that with back in the MySpace days, maybe a little, yeah. little tilt to everything. Yes. <laughs> okay. The other thing you mentioned before when we were talking about a cell phone versus a DSLR mm -hmm. um, is the depth of focus, right? Yeah. This is a problem I've had before um, with a tall plant or one that's blooming and has kind of things at multiple levels. Yeah. How do you get everything in focus and looking sharp? Like if you are just on a cell phone. So a lot of that comes down to your angle, right? Like, so if you have a big bloom and you're trying to photograph the flower up here, the succulent at the bottom is really far away from the bloom, uh -huh. at least from the camera's perspective. Yeah. And so anything that you're focused on is the only thing that's going to be in sharp focus. Everything else is going to have a varying level of focus. Okay. So if something is close to your camera and you're focusing on it, everything below it is going to be really out of focus, assuming it's far ish away. Yeah. You know, for a succulent that could be, you know, you have a one foot bloom, that succulent's really far away from the camera Yeah. from its perspective. So in that sense, you could pick a different angle. You could shoot from the side and then you can get, um, cause they're all going to be on the same plane, right? So right. at that point you have your flower and it's coming up out of the succulent and all of that is roughly flat. Same distance from the camera yes, lens. Okay, exactly. So that's really the thing to pay attention to is, are all the things that I want in focus, can they all be the same distance from the camera? Can they all be aligned on that same plane? And if not, what's the thing I really want to be in focus the most? Focusing on that and then, depending on the amount of light outside, your phone will, it might have a lot of stuff that's out of focus, it might be sharp focus. 
Mm. The simple version of that, if there's a lot of light, more things are going to be in focus. Okay. If there's not a lot of light, more things are going to be soft. Mm. So, um, and that just has to do with the way the camera itself is adjusting. So these have all been things um, that you can adjust like while you're taking your picture and setting up the shot. What about after the fact? Because I feel like, I don't know, I see a lot of photos of succulents online that are like heavily saturated and just overly edited. Um, but is are there some really simple techniques for a beginner that can improve your photo, but still keep it looking natural and looking it as it looks to my eye? Because sometimes I'll look at a plant and it looks amazing. And then yeah. the photo just doesn't do it justice. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges I find with phone photography yeah. is the coloring. Okay. And I don't know, there, there's not a lot of great ways in the camera, like as you're taking the photo to adjust it, there are some ways, but to some extent you're better off doing it afterward. At least okay. I find that to be easier. <laughs> so um, most photo editors or just, you know, the gallery on your phone will give you some options for editing. Mm -hmm. So you'll have like brightness and contrast. So maybe you took a picture and it's a little bit too bright or it's a little bit too dark. You can just adjust the brightness and that will kind of help you offset it a little bit. It doesn't go very far, so you still want to make sure you're getting a good exposure in the camera, in uh -huh. your phone, um, but that can help you just compensate for some little adjustments. The other thing that you can change is the coloring. So usually they'll talk about warmth or tint. So warmth generally refers to the blue and yellow tones, Okay. and they're opposite each other. So as you add more yellow, it'll take away blue. If you add more blue, it'll take away the yellow. And then with tint, it's magenta and green. Okay. And so with that, you're getting, you know, that more reddish purple and then um, more green. So that's one that with succulents, I find I use a lot where they tend to look more green in camera than they are in real life. Yeah. And so you can kind of just adjust that um, tint and move it more towards the pink side. As you mentioned though, you can go too far. <laughs> you can make it look really wild and crazy. Yeah. But when you're trying to make it look like what you saw, that's a great way to adjust it afterwards. Okay. Just to make those little tweaks. Nice. I love it. And one thing I keep, the word you keep using is intentional. And I think that's something I'm going to take away of like, you're making choices, intentional choices and trying out a lot of things to see what works. Yeah. Cool. And your eye doesn't see things the same way that the camera does. And I think that's the biggest disconnect people have when they're taking pictures mm -hmm. is you might see the succulent and it looks so purple. Yeah. And then you photograph it and it doesn't look nearly as purple. And I think that's why people tend to oversaturate, which you can make that adjustment too. Right. But a lot of times as you adjust for purple, you may find like all your greens start to look weird. So you have to kind of give and take and look at not just the one thing, you know, your one subject, yeah. but look at what's around it too. One thing that I kind of mentioned was like, you want to get it as best you can in camera. Yeah. So one of the tricks that I found that I don't think most people are aware of is there's two things that you can um, kind of lock in and also adjust when you're taking a picture. Okay. So when you're on your phone and you're, you know, looking at your subject matter, wherever you tap on your screen, it will start to focus in that area. Oh, all right. And so if you, if you're following like the rule of thirds, uh -huh. your camera's going to try and focus in the center mm -hmm. or find the thing that's closest to it. So by tapping on your phone, you can say, Hey, this is what's important to me. Force Keep it. This is, yeah. Uh, all right. So you can tap it. You can also tap and then actually lock it. So it will only focus right in that area. But then the other adjustment you can make with that is exposure. So you tap again where you want to be focused. And then on most phones, there's some way that you can like slide your finger and make it brighter or darker. So you can actually change the exposure as you're taking it. Okay. That works way better than trying to like over or underexpose afterward in the adjustments because it will actually change the way the camera is taking the picture. Oh, okay. So if you have something that's like super dark, a lot of times, you know, when you hover your camera over it, it'll look like you can't even see any detail. And so you can adjust and make it a little bit brighter. Nice. Well, thank you so much. This was really helpful. And I, I want to like try these things out as soon as possible. Um, 
But yeah, you bring like this wealth of knowledge. I didn't even realize you went to school for this as well and that you were a lifelong photographer before that too. Yes, from the time I was little, I always had a camera with me. Nice! So. <laughs> it has, I've had a lot of practice to implement and figure things out. And that's the thing that's great about photography, being digital and on your phone. Mm -hmm. You can try so many different things and there's really no like consequence. You know, you're not spending hundreds of dollars on rolls of film right. these days, but just with your phone, you can just go out and play, take a bunch of pictures, see what works and see what doesn't. Yes, great, thank you so much. And you can see some of Cassie's amazing succulent photography over at Succulents and Sunshine. Thank you so much for watching and happy succulenting. <laughs>